Hi there and welcome to PhD of Living. Today we're talking sunscreen. What's in it and how does it work? Come on in. First, let's touch on why we need sunscreen in the first place. Sunlight's composed predominantly of visible light and infrared or IR light. However, there's also a decent amount in the ultraviolet or UV range, starting at about 100 nanometer wavelength. Remember that humans can only see 400 to 700 nanometers or so, so we're talking about this sub 400 nanometer UV range. There are three types of UV radiation we're concerned about, UVA, UVB, and UVC, and here you can see their relative wavelengths. You can see we go from about 100 nanometers in the UVC up to about 400 nanometers just before where humans start to see violets in the UVA. In order to figure out which of these UV varieties is worst for you, we're going to first look at the equation C equals lambda nu. C stands for the speed of light. 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. It's fast. Like 186,000 miles per second fast. No, I didn't misspeak. 186,000 miles per second. Lambda is the wavelength, and nu, not the letter V, is frequency. With this equation, you can see that the lambda wavelength and nu frequency are inversely related for a given C speed of light. Therefore, the higher the wavelength, the lower the frequency. And the lower the wavelength, the higher the frequency. Now let's take this equation and move it to a second one and put all this together. And here's our second equation, E equals H nu. E here is energy in joules, H is Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds for those of you playing at home, and nu is still our frequency. With this equation, we can see that the frequency and energy are directly proportional. Coupling it with our previous equation, we can see that a higher wavelength light wave has a lower frequency, and therefore has a lower energy. Vice versa, a lower wavelength wave has a higher frequency, which has a higher energy. Make sense? Great, let's go to the UVs. Now we can see that UVC, with the lowest wavelengths, therefore the highest frequencies, therefore the highest energies, is by far the worst of the three. However, luckily, UVC is absorbed almost completely by the ozone layer, so we can just forget all about that one. UVA and UVB, however, pass right through that puppy. UVA attacks the body indirectly by making reactive species such as hydroxyls and oxygen species, which then go to directly attack our DNA. UVB, the real killer in all this, directly attacks DNA, and that's why we're going to spend the next piece of time talking about UVB. First though, let's talk about DNA. DNA and RNA have four bases each. They share these three, adenine, guanine, and cytosine. In DNA, the fourth base is this molecule here, thymine. In RNA, however, the fourth base is this molecule, uracil. Adenine and guanine are purine bases, meaning they have this heterocyclic bicycle here, with the obvious differences being the amino on adenine compared to the carbonyl on guanine, plus this extra amino here. Thymine, cytosine, and uracil, on the other hand, are called pyrimidine bases, because they're all based on the molecule pyrimidine. This heterocycle shown here. Thiamine and uracil really only differ by this methyl group here on the thymine. Cytosine, as you can see, is a little bit different, but they all have this general ring structure with the double bond over here. And the double bond here is important, because when the UVB light attacks the pyrimidine base, in this case a thymine, it can cause it to react with an adjacent pyrimidine base. In this case I've got two thymines here, but it could just as easily be two cytosines, two uracils, a cytosine uracil, or a thymine cytosine. It can't be a thymine uracil because they don't exist on the same strand of a given nucleic acid. When those double bonds react, they cause a cyclobutane ring. Because these molecules are now linked by the cyclobutane, it's called a pyrimidine dimer. And this sort of thing is what we in the biz call a molecular lesion. It causes DNA or RNA transcription to go completely haywire and can end up causing that dreaded DNA or RNA mutation. Another pyrimidine dimer is called a 6,4 photoproduct. The 6 carbon of one pyrimidine base attacks the 4 carbon of a second one. According to this one website online, Listen, this is supposed to be a video about sunscreen and we're debating the mechanism of a minor product from pyrimidine nucleic acid base mutations. We're so far off the rails right now, I'm not really looking for secondary sources, so forgive me if I'm not rigorously fact checking. The 6,4 photo product goes through this intermediate here. Finally, we get to something called the Dewar photo product, or Dewar pyrimidinone. It's basically just an isomerization of this pyrimidine base from the 6,4 photo product that gives us this weird bicycle sort of stuff going on. Okay, that's the gnarly stuff that UVB does to your body. Now let's talk about how to prevent that stuff. The primary purpose of sunscreen is to prevent the harmful effects of UVA and UVB light. 
It does this in one of two ways, either by absorbing that energy and converting it into something less dangerous, or by scattering the light and never allowing it to reach the body in the first place. The first mechanism is significantly more interesting than the latter. The FDA has approved the use of 15 organic molecules and two inorganic molecules for safe use in sunscreen. I'll summarize the 15 organic molecules by just saying that there's piles and piles of conjugated double bonds all about them. If you remember back to our eye color episode, the pigment melanin in the eye has a gigantic conjugated double bond system. What that does is allows the melanin to soak up different wavelengths of energy in the eye and spit them back out as other wavelengths. Same principle applies to the organic molecules the FDA has approved. They soak up UVA and UVB light and spit them back out as less harmful wavelengths. Some of these molecules absorb UVA, some absorb UVB, and some absorb both. For the purpose of demonstration, let's take a look at a normal one and kind of a funky one. This is oxybenzone, or benzophenone 3. I consider it a fairly normal sunscreen ingredient for two reasons. The first, significant aromaticity. The second one I've drawn with the circle instead of the double bonds, well, because I'm lazy. Also, conjugated double bond system, which is sort of part and parcel to the aromaticity. You can see we go double bond, single bond, double to the carbonyl, single and back into the double bond, single bond, whatever, delocalized electron region of the second aromatic ring. What this does, the aromaticity and the conjugation, is allow the molecule to soak up that harmful UVA and UVB ray and spit them back out as less harmful wavelengths. Again, each of these 15 compounds that you see the FDA has approved are pretty much like this, aromaticity, conjugation. Even for something funky such as this, insulazole or phenylbenzimidazolsulfonic acid, the same trends continue. Two big aromatic rings linked conveniently by a double bond here that puts the conjugation together. I bring up insulazole because of this cool sulfonic acid piece, which isn't on a lot of the other molecules. And that's about it. The inorganic molecules approved for use are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. These bad boys have allegedly been around for thousands of years as sunscreen. Wasn't there, wouldn't know. And they basically just scatter all UV light possible so your body never even sees it. In addition, if your sunscreen looks white, it might be because the particle size of these oxides is big enough that they also scatter visible light. See what I'm saying? They scatter everything. That being said, if your sunscreen goes on clear, it might be because these are just ground to a nanoparticle size, at which point they don't scatter the light so they don't look white. And that's the general gist of sunscreen. UV rays can cause damage, but through either the mitigation of energy through conjugated aromatic systems or inorganic particle light scattering, the skin's protected. I will see all you at the beach. On August 29th, 1997, it's going to feel pretty and real to you too. Anybody not wearing two million sunblocks gonna have a real bad day, get it?